Welcome to Talking Giants presented by DraftKings. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick. And on today's show, we have an interview with Dan Benton of the Giants Wire USA Today. And we've got to talk about a couple of Giants signings and Joe Looney and Todd Davis, both guys who are probably going to end up making the roster. Um, you know, they weren't bottom of the roster signings, which is why we're going to spend a little time on them. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk a little about some training camp talking points. Justin, how are you? Bobby Skinner, I feel like a little crummy today. We both have on the same colored shirts, which how does that feel for the viewers? Like, how does that look? Does that do something with the eyes? I don't know. Um, didn't care to shave. I'm addicted to MLB The Show. I bought that this weekend. It, it just totally addicted to that. I'm using five different computers right now to pull off this episode tonight, and I'm doing great. Next week, we are preparing for a preseason game. We're preparing for Fan Fest, of course. That is next week, but also I mean, I'll be in New week, York next week. You will be in New York next week, which I'm, I'm excited to see you. I'm picking you up from the airport. You're probably going to punch me in the face. First time that you see me since 2019. So you're going to hold a sign. Should you should I, get a sign that says like, um, like tall asshole or something. Tall, I was about to, the asshole was going to be the phrase that I tall, put on long there. blonde haired asshole. <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of strange how that's the phrase that we both thought of. Yeah. Bobby Skinner. I'm, I'm excited for things to kind of happen and start to happen. And, uh, PPPs are going strong too. How are you? I'm good. And and speaking of tall a-holes, Robert Browner. He's a brown noser, even though it's not spelled with that. It's like sure. Brawny, Browner. Mm-hmm. And Chris Ruggiero, who mm. probably the Yankees probably just traded for him. Justin, who are yeah. these long, tall Italians? We've been having a very good run of Italian names signing up for the patreon so if you're not an italian name sorry don't sign up or you can just change your name to something italian patreon.com slash talking giants it's going to get a lot of fun uh, when we do some game reaction stuff um they're all on like weekends so um we won't be recording like the day of but you want to be there when we're recording our reaction to some of these preseason games and especially during the regular season we'll be recording the night after every single regular season game so you get access to the live shows and you get to hang out and you know, enjoy the the beauty of def- of defeat. Enjoy the beauty of defeat. Enjoy the the beauty of winning with us. Plus, Bobby will send you a magnet, and you have the opportunity to win some free shirts twice a month. Patreon.com slash talk with giants. Thank you to our patrons. A couple of new tiers in there, by the way, too. All right, Justin, let's get into this episode. Before we talk about Joe Looney and Todd Davis, right now the talk of Giants Camp is that the offense doesn't look good. Yes. Yes. Now I'm now typically like you want to say something a little bit more about that before you throw it to me, or do you want to just throw it to me right well, now? Well, honestly, you tweeted out earlier, and I think you said it just right. Without us being there, it is hard to – like I don't have – like when I hear those, like, yeah, it doesn't make me feel warm or good inside, but it doesn't make me feel worried. But also, the offense was the second-worst offense in the NFL last year, and yeah. that that is cause for concern, you know, and it wasn't simply just – they didn't have a Kenny Galladay, Saquon Barkley. A lot of them had to do a scheme. The first half of the season had, you know, some Daniel Jones like big mistakes. Um, so there, there is like some cause for there's cause for concern for the offense just in general. But these practices and also something I noticed. Now they opened it up a little bit, I guess, uh, for the first time on Monday. Yeah, but they've been starting in the red zone. And Joe Judge actually gave a really good explanation for that. He's like, "Hey, we're ramping these guys up physically." So, you know, you work in the red zone, short area stuff. It's, you know, you're not fully exerting yourself, you know, long sprinting and, and opening yourself up to, to uh, you know, you know, muscle injuries or tissue injuries, it, injuries, tissue injuries. Um, so I thought that was good. But also the offense was horrible in the red zone and the defense. I mean, that's what that's what made the defense good was, you know, we talked about it a lot. It was like, hey, they gave long drives. They gave us some yards, but they were the second best red zone defense in the entire NFL last year, where the offense was the second worst. So um, here's the one thing I will say that worries me is that they're working a ton of fades. That's we can't be a team that just throws fades in the red zone. Yeah. Can, I know yeah, we have between... Kenny Galladay. You can have a fade on a concept, but like on a on a play, if you're like, hey, I like this matchup, I'm going there by what the defense is showing. But if we're just like a all right, we get down to the red zone, let's let's throw a fade. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that. You know, I guess the 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 devil's um not the devil. What am I what am I trying to say? The the alternative to that, devil's advocate. That's the phrase. Good podcasting. Devil's, devil's advocate. Huh, what? <laughs> yeah, take a lap. 
the devil's advocate to that is, well, the Giants kind of have the personnel to do the end zone fades, question mark at the end, because Kenny Galladay, Kyle Rudolph, even though Kyle Rudolph's not out there because he's still kind of recovering. But it's but that, and then Dan Duggan also put a note in like his observations from today, that the Giants have also spent a lot of time working on wide receiver screens. So I get it if it's ramp up, you know, that that's there's, the take. They're where still it's like, installing a lot of the playbook yes. too, you know, yes. like preseason games is when, you, you know, you don't look at necessarily the result, but like how does the offense look like you're, you know, they're, they are still installing a lot of the playbook and, and, you know, they've shown that they're kind of taking it, you know, like, like red zone today, red, you know, they're working on short area stuff. So, yeah. so if we're in uh, week two of the preseason and we're in Cleveland and we're still doing a lot of wide receiver screens and, and red zone fades and it's like, yeah, it's like, all right, what are we doing here? But also at the same time, I really do trust my eyes. You know, Bobby Skinner really hasn't been up to training camp, but I, I love to tell the story of in 2017 when the Giants had Super Bowl expectations for the second year of Ben McAdoo. I went to those practices, and granted, I was, I was a young guy. You know, I, I was still playing kind of football myself at somewhat of a high high school level, and I was just watching these practices again, just might take my opinion. Watching these practices, this team doesn't look good. There's not energy. There's not movement. There's the offense doesn't look good. The team just didn't look good. And that was my feeling. And that was my take still was hopeful about the season because everybody just says it's practice. It's practice. It's practice. And then when they're bad in the preseason, it's just preseason. It's just preseason, it's just preseason. So having that, there is a value to practice and there is a value to the observation of the team does not look crisp. There's not much of a value in it right now where they're not, they didn't even have a practice of full pads yet. The day that you're listening and watching for this yeah. is the first is the first day that they're having full pads. But, at the, you know, so at the same time, Bobby, if we are talking about this two weeks from now, yeah, like um, I'm getting nervous city, but also it's not just nervous city that the offense looks bad in training camp. It is the fact, and like you said, to leave this whole discussion off full circle, it is the fact that the Giants offense was bad last year and Jason Garrett's still here. That's why I'm worried about the offense, not because they look bad in practice. But I do see people's point when they do get worried based off of bad practice. So I see every every side of it. Right. And and they're going – you know, the defense is, is already pretty good. And what has been like one big thing where it's like, this can really take this defense to the next level, Fedora Jackson plays really well. And supposedly like he's like the star of, of the defense on yeah. camp right now. He had a nice which gets pass, me excited uh... for the defense, dude. Like if Fedora is real deal and ready to go – and, you know, they've asked every receiver about, like, his defense. Like, yeah, Bradbury's got more of the size, Tinkle, and adore has got the speed. Like, I am really excited to see that combo of corners of Bradbury and Adore. Yeah. Like, that That would be beautiful to see those guys work together and play well. Like, it's – oh, my God. We're going to be able to get blitz again. We're going to be able to blitz and, and be comfortable about it. I'm kind of low-key – this is bad – and this may be a bad take. I'm kind of low key more excited for a Dory Jackson than Kenny Galladay, because I think there is a, there is a higher ceiling for a Dory Jackson's impact on the defense than Kenny Galladay's impact on the offense. Like Kenny Galladay is not going to single-handedly make this offense a top 10 offense. He can kind of help it be middle of the pack, which is what I'm expecting, but middle of the pack is not fun. A defense that is top five of the national football league is kind of fun. And a Dory Jackson is going to help us hopefully help us do that. And he also had a, kind of a nice pass breakup on Kenny Galladay and like the, in the back of the end zone, Galladay like had a ball in his hands for a touchdown, but Dory Jackson just like rips it out. And it was really, really fun to see that clip uh, during practice. Yep. So it's, if you want to be negative, say the offense sucks. If you want to be positive, say the defense is great. It's, it's there you go. Love simple it. As that. All right. Let's talk about some news though. The giants sign Joe Looney. Now, supposedly they made a run at him in 2020 and they, they, put an offer on the table, you know, Jordan Renan and, and Dan Duggan had reported six foot three, 315 pounds turns 31 at the end of August He's played for Dallas, most of his career. And that's where the name sounds familiar. Um, start of 42 career games. Shane, the Mew is going to be okay, but I do think it might've given them a little scare. The Shane, the Mew injury. You know what I mean? Or stuff like they got if, if Shane Lemieux never goes down, I'm not necessarily sure that Joe Looney comes in, but I do think like J Joe Looney to me is depth. I don't see him as coming in and playing and or planning to start. And I think it might have scared him. And again, this is so tough when we're not there. But where is Zach Fulton, Bobby? Like, 
Where is he this played dude? with the ones today? But I think that was because Kenny Wiggins was out of practice. Yeah, I mean, that's it's kind of disappointing. Where you know we made that sign again, we're like, sure. You know, we were kind of expecting the dude to compete with Shane Lemieux for the starting guard job, and you know we expected. And Fulton's Lemieux. had a mostly good career too. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So again, we're not there. We don't know what the reps look like, but like the fact that Fulton may not be doing as well maybe to start we'll get on the we'll get some pads on on tuesday and we'll then we'll really rock and roll and we'll see you know who's uh whose balls are bigger in a way but looning i you know the fact that he has the garrett ties and he he, he knows he knows the offense uh, in a way and he's also just an entertaining dude um, yeah, it seems like a good dude he was, he was talking about uh how his father was like a coach when he played you know kind of growing up and he said to him before every single game probably when he was like in pop warner not like in high school um imagine your father telling you snap crackle pop before a high school game <laughs> like and the, go cuckoo coo for cocoa puffs go, oh no snap crackle why did i say that i'm really off today i'm bad, bad um, radio. but but looney's coming off of a little bit of a down year in 12 games um at center he allowed three sacks three qb hits and 16 pressures i mean that's all more than um you know Nick Gates had playing a full 16 games and new to the position, new to the position at center. So like, I really do think it's depth. You can argue that he could come in and compete for guard. I just don't see that being the vision for him. Now, Jonathan Harrison, who returned from the pup list today uh, on Monday, that's gotta be kind of scary news for him, you know, cause it seemed like he was the very clear backup center. Like he was going to be the backup center. Brett Hagee would probably play on the practice squad. Now Looney's in here. You got Fulton as that guard. Um, you know, Nate Solder is going to be on the team. That's eight offensive linemen after the starters right there. And it's like, do they want to keep Jonathan Harrison to be a third center? Or do they want to keep a guy like Kyle Murphy and protect him? Or even a Chad Slade who's been on the team for a little while now. So Jonathan Harrison, I do see, you know, where to me he was a lock for the roster when camp started. Now it seems like he's probably going to get cut. And Harrison was one of those guys that wasn't signed during free agency, right? He was signed in like... January, February? Yeah, because he was on the practice squad with the Bills, so he was able yeah. to be signed at that time. Yeah, so practice squad player last year versus Joe Looney, who maybe was expecting some sort of contract during free agency, and you know now he's signed during camp. So, um, yeah, scary times for Jonathan Harrison. Wish you could do a film breakdown. That sucks. Yeah, you pass. know what it sucks is I would love to tell you all about Joe Looney, and, you know, but NFL Game Pass right now, and tweet at the NFL to get this back. And if you have a Game Pass, leave them bad reviews. They took away the film. And and even if you want to just watch like the TV version, you can't like go through it. Like you have to watch the entire thing. It's brutal. Like you can't pick plays. Like it, it really is screwing us right now. And they said it's not going to be back for months. And it, do, and it shouldn't take months. So please help us out with that because it's stopping us from doing this podcast film breakdown. Like without that, we can't do the O-line report when the season starts. So yeah, no. Um, please go attack the NFL for that. Like, go attack them hard. Um, but um, here's a here's a point. But Looney and, is a lot more accomplished than Harrison, and yes, and I I do expect Looney to be maybe even the swing guard. We'll see. Yeah. Here's one more point on, and it kind of sh- relates to both of these signings that the Giants made. Getting worried about the offensive line, getting worried about interior linebacker depth, blah blah blah. The Giants used to be at a point where they were making these ragtag signings for guys to actually like play like, Hey, John Jerry, a guy like John Jerry is going to be signed and he is actually going to start. And if he goes down that we're going to have to make more ragtag signings, like, you know, getting Joe Looney here and getting Todd Davis for interior linebacker three or four. You know, those used to be the giant starters. So if there's like consolation that you have in your brain right now, but offensive line depth, it's at least the fact that, Hey, they have their draft picks. They have their draft picks, and Nick Gates is an undrafted free agent. They have their draft picks and their homegrown guys kind of like on the team, where in the past, like Joe Looney, sign him, he were he would be like brought in to start. Jamon and Brown signed midseason coming in the start. Jamon Brown, DJ Fluker, who just got cut from the Dolphins for an undisclosed reasons for injury when he struggled with injuries in his, his entire career. So those used to be the guys that started for the Giants. Our now, depth has a ton of experience too. Yes. How many starts you, you, you 339 starts for the backups between Nate Solder, who has the most 
Zach Fulton, Jonathan Harrison, Joe Looney, and Kenny Wiggins. I mean, they've all started. I think almost all of them have started more games than any of these guys in general. Like Will Hernandez has the most starts out of, on the line right now. I think yeah. he might. I think he might have a few more. He does. He has more than Kenny Wiggins, but I think all the other guys have more. Yeah, he, he. Yeah. Besides, um, I don't know. But anyways, well, well, no, then, 3, 339 career starts for the backups, 83 for the starters, yeah, and Will Hernandez what? is the big, is the biggest earner of starts out of the rest of those. Nick Gates would be second. And then uh, you have uh, this three second years, three second year guys in Thomas, Parrot, and Lemieux. And then guess what? If somebody goes down, then you're not having an Eric Smith situation at left tackle versus the Jets in 2019, where you're like, oh my God, who is this guy? He's never played it down in his life. So there you go. Love that. Love that for us. Shane Lemieux day to day, which is good. Matt Parrot back at practice. We're already practicing with the ones, which is good. So. Um, dis- disaster avoided, and we got ourselves a little more insurance. Um, if they bring in Austin Ryder, we'll have that conversation. Saquon if, is running. If if that happens, yep. Saquon Saquon's around, moving around. Saquon's going to play week one. I feel pretty confident. Oh that. well, I I was always confident Saquon playing week one. It's just the fact that not going to be getting twenty carries right, and, right. like everybody expects. Well, if you want to bet on when Saquon will play or how many carries we'll get, DraftKings yeah. Sportsbook is not only my favorite sportsbook, but also America's top-rated sportsbook. Speaking of America, our top athletes are over in Tokyo. Competing for the gold. I want the gold. And DraftKings has a medal-worthy offer just to remind listeners. Listen to this great offer. Place any pre-event wager of $1 to be eligible to cash $100 in free credits if America wins any medal this year. That's 100 to 1 odds on an American athlete to stand on the podium and receive gold, silver, or bronze this week. 100 to 1 odds on an offer like this doesn't come around often. So sign up for DraftKings Sportsbook now to get on all the action. By the way, I made the joke of like, hey, we should debate Simone Biles, you know, like just a joke. And I said, you can be the guy who says that she's weak or whatever. And someone took that as me saying that you said that and basically called you a racist, which was really nice. I, I, I enjoyed that. They're like, you know. Uh, this Great is way not, to kick off I, my maybe Friday. I should be saying this in the middle of an ad, but it was just so funny. Like someone took that very sarcastic joke, and I like the guy, and just leaped into like this is this is the problem with people like you, Justin. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code John Boy when you sign up to turn one dollar into one hundred dollars in free credits if America wins a medal. That's code John Boy to turn one dollar into one hundred dollars in free credits for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100-GAMBLER in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Or call Justin and harass him. Yeah, please do. Great way to start off my Friday last week. <laughs> we deleted the comment because it was like, we can't have someone that doesn't no. listen reading this comment. And it was like, I, I replied and I said, please leave the timestamp of when I said that because I never said that when we were recording but you said it off air all like you were oh, going yeah. off on her oh yeah just went off um todd davis todd davis six foot one the Giants signed him 230 pounds 29 years old inside linebacker seven year nfl vet who spent most of his time at the denver broncos was part of the super bowl team the vikings this past season with the vikings this past season he played 26 percent of the snaps he was signed after a couple games and he was on the covid list for a couple of games 35 tackles, two tackles for a loss and a sack. Uh, over 500 career tackles, 23 tackles for life. Like, he's played. He's played a lot. He was even a, a captain uh, for the Broncos at time. Like I said, we haven't been able to watch real film on him. But I talked to um, a guy I know, you know, who covers the Vikings, and he said, you know, he's a super solid run defender, won't embarrass your defense, but he's not a difference maker. We'll make the plays he's asked, but nothing else. And, Justin, I think this has to do with Reggie Ragland. Because Reggie Ragland is still on the non-football injury list. We have no idea. And the inside linebacker room had kind of shaped up. Like, you got Blake Martinez. He's that guy. You got Ragland, who's the vet, who's, again, not going to do anything great, but he's a good, he's a good solid vet. Tay Crowder, the young guy. And then Carter Coffin was that fourth guy. But this past week, with Blake Martinez on the COVID list, he's off, but they're going to ramp him back up. I mean, they had Tay Crowder, who's playing his fourth year ever, on defense as the as the, the number one and then Carter Coffin who's never played inside linebackers the number two so I really do think in le- if if Ragland doesn't come back I think to, and even if Ragland comes back late Todd Davis might make this roster over him just because he's out there and playing um and but maybe you know not as a starter but I do think 
if Raglan doesn't come back or he comes back and he doesn't look back f- f- good from whatever injury he has, then Todd Davis will make this team. If he doesn't, uh, if Raglan does come back, I don't see Todd Davis making it. Our guy, Kale Garrett from Missouri, he's going to be getting those opportunities. Yeah, but Todd Davis, ton of experience. Kind of crazy. He's Super Bowl champ. You know, we cut Kelvin Benjamin to bring in a Super Bowl champ. I mean, Joe Judge knows about winning, right, Bobby? I mean, that's the take. That's the I take. Mean, he's, he's played like he's been an important player in the NFL for a while. Again, um, two years of 100-plus tackles and one year where he had 97. So I'm going to round up, and he has three years of 100-plus tackles. I've been I mean, rounding last up year where he, down. where he had started the season late and was on the COVID list. He, he didn't have those numbers. But the year before that in Denver, he had 100-plus tackles. So he was yep. – you know, a big part of that defense. And again, I really think this has to do with Reggie Ragland not practicing. If Reggie Ragland is practicing, I don't think they bring Todd Davidson, but he's not. And maybe he's not going to, we have no clue because it's on the non-football yeah. injury list. Um, hamstring have, hamstrings are tough. And that's we haven't the, heard anything about yeah. him working on the side either. Like we have no clue what the deal is with Reggie Ragland. Yeah. Hamstring injuries are tough to start the summer. I mean, everybody remembers, you know, Hey, OBJ, his rookie year hamstring. Darius Slayton during his uh, rookie camp hamstring. And I wasn't even until like, you know, I feel like week two or week three of the preseason where he had that crazy catch against Cincinnati, where he really started to kind of come back at full strength. And, you know, those guys were both rookies who the Giants are willing to be patient with Reggie Raglan on a one-year deal when interior linebacker depth always kind of goes like that, like a snap of the finger. Yeah. You're not going to be as patient. So Todd Davis, he has the experience. Let's go, dude. Let's go. Let's see it. Yeah. Yeah, so I, and I don't think he'll beat Tay Crowder out if Blake is healthy. But also, it's like, you know what? If Blake goes down, it's nice to have a veteran presence who knows how to play the position and set the defense. Like, I love Tay, but I don't want him doing that in year two. You know, I want him playing, you know, that that will back role, filling his gap, playing aggressive, not having to be the QB of, you know, quote unquote QB of the defense. So bringing in a veteran guy who knows how to run your defense. And like I said, solid run defender, won't embarrass you, not a difference maker. Uh, but again, not, not going, not going to embarrass you. And you know what, if we had Tay Crowder, maybe uh, Tay Crowder and Carter Coffin out there might be a little more athletic and fast than Todd Davis and make some cooler plays, but there might be times where they, they totally screw up the defense. So, um, it's, it's good to bring the vet in Yeah. and if you don't need him, you don't need him. but right now he's in there. And Devonte Downs will be unathletic and make glaring mistakes. Devonte Downs is not making this roster. So I'm very happy about that. Um, it's it, now it is a inside linebacker. We say it every year. It's like if you're the fourth inside linebacker when camp starts, you're going to get playing time at some point. But uh, Devontae Downs isn't that, so we, we can be happy. He might even be like the six when you think about it. Like you got Blake Martinez, Tay Crowder, Todd Davis, Reggie Raglan, Carter Coughlin. And I'm even, I'm just going to put Kale Garrett over him, even though they haven't shown that. Do so it. He's, just, he's the seventh inside. And you know what? Maybe even TJ Brunson, by the way. TJ Brunson lights up Kenny Galladay in a no shoulder pad practice on Friday. What a lunatic. Like so dumb. One is Kenny Galladay. We just spent all this money on him, but just lighting a dude up in the middle of a non padded practice. Like, dude, that's not, that's not macho. Like that doesn't impress the coaches, but our guy, Nick Gates went there to back up uh, Kenny G. That's why I'm glad it happened. So Nick Gates got the opportunity to show that he was the alpha, but I mean, when Mr. Irrelevant, the last pick of the NFL draft, gets playing time over you, like, literally right away. It wasn't even like there was a grace period of T.J. Brunson getting some spring reps, training camp reps over, over Tay Crowder. Like, no, literally from, like, day one, Tay Crowder was, like, the better football player than T.J. Brunson. Um, you got to show your macho a little bit. I mean, I get it. I get it. But that's not macho, hitting someone with no pads on. Like, that's just that's just stupid. Like it's not. There's nothing macho about that at all. Hey, um, he'll be inactive for like 75 percent of the games this year again. He's so. not even gonna make the team. I don't think. <laughs> Did you see Joe Judge with that onside kick versus the Real Peppers? That was beautiful. Oh yeah, uh, it's just he made the entire defense run a lap today. I mean, this is just peak. Joe, Joe Looney, Judge like his season. first practice, like run a lap, and he's like, "Oh, we do that." Like, which yeah. he took it. Uh, he took it well. Looney, Looney does seem like an awesome dude. Looney's like smiling over there. He's like, I haven't run a lap since I was 10. Great uh, beard. Good beard. So one more thing before we kick it to the interview with Dan Benton. The Giants signed Damian Willis, wide receiver. 
He, uh, oh. you know, started 2019 as an undrafted free agent with the Broncos, and then he bounced around with the Jags or with the Bengals, and then bounced around with the Jags and practice squad. Uh, in 2019 with the Bengals, like he got some playing time. Had nine catches, 82 yards. 24 year old, six foot three out of Troy. He's a big body dude. Like he had 13 touchdowns his last few years of Troy. Like, like a big body guy. Justin, you remember that we played the Bengals in the preseason of 2019, right? Yeah, just recollected uh, some nice Darius Slayton catches there. Well, I want you to hear this. Let me pull it up. I want to hear it. Things and, and got burnt. He got moss on that one play, which that number nine guy for Cincinnati, they just throw the ball up to him. He makes plays. I, I don't know who he is, but pretty damn good. Um, I thought Grant- Damian Willis, baby. <laughs> that was him. I remembered because – when they signed him, I went to go like look at some stuff. I was like number nine from Cincinnati. I was like, I remember him having some plays against us in the preseason. He had like he mossed Norris Jenkins on one play against the starters. Then he had a touchdown later in the game. Like I liked him. He was like he was the one player for Cincinnati that stood out to me was Damian Willis. So uh, I'm glad he's here. Big. He's not gonna make the team, but I'm glad he's here. Like that was, um, you know. The one, like it's, I, I remember that distinctly. Number nine on Cincinnati, and then we get him, and he's a last chance you guy, which are, like my brother's a big last chance you fan. You are a preseason nut. You're a nut. I do. I, I'm so excited to watch other preseason players. Like you know, by the way, Hall of Fame game, Bravo. They have the Dallas Cowboys, so we can make fun of the Dallas Cowboys. Now remember, the starters don't really play in the Hall of Fame game, so you know who's probably going to play the most of the reps for the Steelers at quarterback. Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne Haskins. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to have so much fun watching the Hall of Fame game. So much fun. It's going to suck because all that he's, he's going to do the same thing that he did in Washington where it's just release the ball two and a quarter seconds and then just dump it off here, dump it off there. That's what it's going to be. And then he's going to brag after the game that his stats are really good when like 75% of his yards are after the catch. He'll probably go like 25 for 26. Like he has 25 of his 26 teeth. But then he has 30. Oh, funny. And then I thought of that one on the spot. Wow. I How, the, you, that's, we have that's 26 what teeth, right? I have who? How many teeth do we have? 32. My mother's a dental hygienist oh. and she's 31 or 32. My mother's a dental hygienist and she makes the joke that she's not good at math. My computer's making noises. I'm sorry. Um, so 31 of 32 teeth. She makes the joke that she can only count to 32 because that's the joke. She's a dental hygienist. Dentist that's jokes. Hilarious. Really um, funny. Before we get to the interview, can you read the ad? Yeah, of course. Is that going to be a thing? You just... I could pick up on transitions. Well, Bobby, we have a new sponsor. <laughs> we have a new sponsor. Sports Management Worldwide. They are the global leader in online sports business education. They teach people how to work on the business side of sports. All of their classes, they're taught by industry professionals. Your mentors have been in the game you want to work in and done the jobs you want to do. Funny story. I actually was at a barbecue this past weekend with you know some friends, some family, talking about like, you know, what I do and, you know, the, talking just about sports in general. And one of my buddies was like, yeah, you know, I, I think I would want to one day kind of like end up in a, in a front office. And it's like, oh, well, the, the path to do it, nobody actually knows. How do you actually get it done? Sports management worldwide is kind of how you do get it done. So I told him about that, told him about our discount code giants. You can get $50 off the first course of your choice when you use the promo code giants. SMWW.com. Use that discount code Giants. $50 off your first course. They offer courses in football, baseball, basketball, soccer, and more. If you have always dreamed of a job working in sports, if you want to work in a front office, if you want to work with film uh, and using digital video editing, they give you the tools to learn how to do it. Sports management management worldwide, they can help you from sports betting to esports, sports broadcasting. Hey. Maybe I should take that course because I was a criminal justice major. They have the what you know and who you know to get you in the game that you love. Sports Management Worldwide, promo code GIANTS. Thank you, SMWW. Thank you. Hopefully um, the Nets sign somebody. All right. Dan Benton of the Giants Wire, USA Today. All right. We now welcome back onto the program. Our friend, part of, he's been covering the New York Giants for 18 years now. 
editor in chief for Giants Wire of US USA Today. I almost said US Today. Dan Benton. Dan, my man, how are you doing? How does it feel to be going into another year of New York Giants football? Well, I'm, I'm just excited football's back. The offseason takes too long. I'm obviously thrilled to be here joining uh, 4 3 Justin and not Tim Bobby. Uh, it's been a little while since I've been on, so it's it's nice to be back on. You guys, like I said, you guys have uh, gotten pretty big since the last time I've been on here. So congratulations due to both of you guys doing great work. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's it's been fun growing. You know, we talked a little bit about be- before. Um, you know, it's exciting. But, Dan, we uh, we want to hear your opinion on the Giants. You know, you do a great job running Giants Wire. And, and you know, like I said, you've, you've been doing this for a long time. So it's like you kind of know what to expect at this point. Like this is year three for me where it's like, oh, yeah, this is how you handle this. And this is new. And this is what you make a big deal out of. This is what you don't. I'll ask you this. What is – and we're starting off with the worst part at first. Yeah, sheesh, Bob. This, isn't a, this is usually a, a me question, not a you question. <laughs> yeah. what, what, is, what is your biggest worry on the team? And I saw Justin put in the notes – uh, uh, example slow offensive start to camp so far because like me i like i have no like people are like oh well offense already starts like i've never really remembered that or anything yet so what like what is uh what's your biggest worry for this team going into 2021 well i know some i've gotten a lot of questions about that actually the slow offensive start i, I don't really get too tied up in knots over that kind of stuff it's uh that's stuff that generally will shake out a little bit over time. I, I wouldn't worry too much about that right now. Plus, the, you know, that's a quality defense Patrick Graham's got over there. So, you know, you're going cold into that. And, you know, sometimes the defense just tends to be ahead of the offense. So I wouldn't really worry about that too much. Now, if it lingers, you know, ask me that question again in a couple of weeks and the answer might be different. But for right now, I, I would say injury is obviously always a concern. I, I think that's kind of a cop-out answer, but it's the truth. Um, you know, you got a lot of guys with some injury histories. You brought in a lot of guys that have, you know, recent injuries. You got Jones coming off one. You got Saquon obviously coming off an injury. Galladay coming off an injury. Jackson coming off an injury. And I think the good thing is, is that Gettleman and company have added a lot of depth, which they really haven't had in several years now. So that kind of, you know, eases the burden a little bit in terms of that. Um, Outside of that, I would say, you know, inside linebacker depth is a little bit of a concern that I've got when you look down at the depth chart. Um, you know, you're again, and that kind of goes back to injuries. You're really only one or two injuries away from, you know, Devontae Downs coming in there and playing a significant role and raise your hand if you're comfortable with that situation. Um, and then obviously you nobody raised their hand. Right, exactly. And uh, then obviously you got the offensive line. I think, again, that's that's a baseline concern for most people. Um I tend to be a little bit more optimistic about their trajectory and their projection and their development than many are. Um, you know, I look at Nick Gates and I think they have a potential stud there. I think Thomas is going to come back strong after his injury. Um, you know, and who knows what happens on the right side. You got some molars on the inside. I still have faith in Hernandez. I don't, I'm not necessarily on the bandwagon to write him off yet. Um, so, you know, the potential is there, but you, 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 I'd be lying if I said there wasn't some level of concern with the offensive line, because with everything the team has done this off season and where they're headed under judge, if that offensive line falters or fails, you know, there's, there's going to be some heads that unfortunately roll as a result of that. So I, I think, you know, the concern there is legitimate. Speaking of the offensive line, um, uh, we later, earlier, latter part of last week, we were shaking our boots waiting for an update for Shane Lemieux. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some things that you're hearing about that injury? Now, luckily, it's day to day. Hopefully he'll be back soon. He's working on the side. Even the day after the injury, he was still working on the side. What are some things you were hearing about that injury? And luckily, it's only day to day. When do you know when we should expect them back? What's some information around that? Well, it's going to be a couple of weeks from some of the reports and, and some of what's being said. Um, um, even, even though they said, you know, they, that he avoided the season injury, injury right out of the gate, there was some level of concern that it, it could have been, you know, surgery out maybe half of the season, something like that. So it's good news that that's not the case. Uh, the specific diagnosis haven't, hasn't been provided. Uh, if I were to guess, and it would just be a guess, is that maybe it's some sort of um, MCL strain, something along those lines. It's going to keep them out a couple weeks. They'll ease them back in, but by all, you know, by everything that I've seen and read and heard so far, it sounds like he'll be good to go come week one, as long as there's no setback. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the O line. You, like you went through it. It's, Hernandez has got like a baseline. I think we should all be expecting Thomas to be good, you know, one, just because he got better as the season went along, but also he's the fourth overall pick. We should expect him to be a good player in year two, maybe not great in year two, but at least good. Um, 
Hernandez or, or, or paired is like the is the biggest concern yeah. for me on this entire team, even more than like a you know, I've been very outspoken against Jason Garrett. Parrot really to me is the biggest difference because he can be the difference of Jones being pressure, pressure, pressure yeah. on his front side all year long, or if he can play to his potential, it can be the difference of us having an extra six, seven big plays. So, oh, yeah, um, I like that is Parrot. I'm excited for him. He's got all the ability, you know. It's like yeah. there's some players where it's like, you know, he doesn't have the ability to be good. Right. Parrot does, but he also could be really bad too, and we would we would be in trouble. I think that's that's actually one of the issues when you look at the offensive line from left to right and then down the depth chart is that you look at each of those guys and you, and you kind of acknowledge the fact that, yeah, these, these guys individually all have a ton of potential. Uh, what are the odds you're going to hit on all five of them? Though? The odds of that are not particularly wonderful, and that does leave some room for error when it comes to guys like Per. But, I, I, again, I'm not necessarily as worried as some just because of the potential these guys have. Plus, judges – himself is a good offensive line kind of guy and lord knows he's built a, an incredibly intelligent and successful offensive line staff after you know some issues last year and i think that's going to go a long way i think you know system consistency is another big thing up and down the entire roster that's going to pay dividends for the giants this year uh, it's been a long time since they've had you know, the same systems offensively and defensively in back-to-back -back seasons. For many of the guys on this team, this is the first time that that's happened since college, early in college. And I've even seen some guys say since high school. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's a potentially big deal right there. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not ready to jump off the deep end when it comes to the offensive line, even though I've acknowledged several times that I was a little taken aback by the fact that they didn't work on it a little bit more this offseason. Yeah, I love the dynamic of the of the coaching staff with that room because, you know, Colombo obviously wasn't Judge's yeah. guy. We saw how that all went down last year. Right. You got Rob Sale, who, his, who is his guy. You got Flats, who was, you know, this the offensive line coach for this team for a long time and, and did a good job working as an analyst. You got Wilkerson, who yeah. has been around for a few years now, so he's got the relationships with the guys. And then you even have Freddie Kitchens, like, you know, putting his input. So mm -hmm. I'm, I love the dynamic of the room. I would love to be a fly on the wall in that. That I'm offensive sure line room. I'm sure you guys would. I mean, all, listen, all those are, are pretty brilliant football minds. And I think that, you know, Judge constantly preaches that he wants teachers. And as long as these guys are all coachable, you know, I, I can see them, each of them making potentially big leaps. Like you said earlier, I think Thomas will. I think one of the biggest issues for him is he kind of got thrust in a role that maybe he didn't anticipate initially. And then he got hurt and it was a relatively significant injury. And the fact that he was able to play so well down the stretch with that lingering injury still, it, it kind of inspires some confidence in me that now that he'll come back healthy in the second year of the same system, he'll play well. So you know, we'll see how things shake out. I, I think they have a tremendous staff there and, um, you know, a lot of potential in the young players. And, and you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes in year two. But I'm not, I'm not necessarily ready to, to panic over that situation. Right. Yeah, but granted, when, when you went down the other day, you know, that obviously raised some big red flags because then you look at the depth and you're like, oh, here we go. You know, you, you may have that next man up mentality. But, you know, we've learned over the past decade watching the Giants that – that doesn't necessarily always pan out well. Right. No. Out, no. Outside of uh, outside of DJ, because you, you talk about, you know, making jumps. Outside of Daniel Jones, who do you think someone on this team is, like, ready to make a leap forward? You know, there could be someone in the edge room, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a Slayton. Or who, like, who do you think is, like, a, a realistic, like, expectation? Like, all right, man, this year you're going you're gonna to be a, a good amount better than what you were last season. You know, I th the first name that pops into my head when I get asked that question is Lorenzo Carter, provided okay. again he can stay healthy. But there are a few other guys too, and I think Gates is, is obviously someone who's on that list as a guy who could make a big leap in this season. And I think Dexter Lawrence is another one. I, maybe he's not the right answer to that question because he's sort of broken out a bit already, and he's a very talented player. But I think he could take that to a whole new level this year. But you know, when I really mold over the names of that question. One that really sticks out in my mind is uh, Peppers, Sabrell Peppers, because, again, he's, he's going into this second year of Patrick Graham's defensive system. He's in a contract season. And we talked to his personal trainer, Brian Walker, a few times this offseason, and that guy has been working out. Like Darnay Holmes as well. They've, both, they've been together working out. Um, and there's a, an extreme level of confidence that he has coming back this year that he's feeling much more comfortable 
in the system. He's feeling more comfortable with the guys around him. Uh, he's embracing the role at strong safety, you know, not necessarily worried about bouncing around at the different safety positions. So uh, again, you know, he, you kind of look at Peppers like, you know, a well-known name, but I do think that he's going to take a, a pretty tremendous leap uh, this season, especially playing in a secondary that's as talented and deep as the Giants have right now. Yeah, um, with McKinney almost being like a free agent acquisition too. I mean, hopefully he can go in the box a little bit more and you're talking about more tackles for losses and, mm -hmm. oh, hey, maybe another, you know, two and a half plus sack season. That'll that'll look pretty nice for, uh, for a contract here. So I know you've been – You've been around the run of the mill for in terms of uh, covering covering the Giants. So I'm probably going to ask you a question that you don't like, but it's something that a lot of fans like to talk about where it's like, you know, right now or bust. So this year, is it a kind of a playoffs or bust year for Daniel Jones and Dave Gunnelman? And I, like I said, I understand how, you know, that question could probably make your skin crawl a little bit, but you know, in your opinion, is this like a let's go this year, let's do something, or it's a kind of a bust kind of year where heads may roll, like you said before? Well, I think it's a fair question now. It may, may not be one that fans or analysts or pundits like, uh, but it, it is a fair question. And, and for obvious reasons, listen, you know, as talented as Daniel Jones is, and I, I believe in Daniel Jones, I'm not going to shy away from that. Pretend I don't. I, I do think he's going to make that leap, but if he doesn't, that doesn't reflect well on Gettleman, but perhaps more to the point, if Jones doesn't make that leap, this team is not going to be successful. And how many losing seasons can you continue to have and bring back Gettleman in good faith? Now, I know Mara said, you know, last week or the week prior that, you know, the, the combination of Judge and Gettleman is working. And when you look at the personnel moves and, and the depth changes over the past two seasons, you can't, it's hard to argue against that. You know, this team on paper looks substantially better than they have since at least 2016. And I think one of the issues that led to the situation the Giants find themselves in now is a lack of patience after Tom Coughlin had, you know, left the team. And that constant cycling of staffs and systems and coaches and personnel, you're not going to find any level of success that way. We saw that with the Cleveland Browns for who the heck knows how long. And I would be inclined to believe that Mara and Tish don't necessarily want to go back down that road. Um, but the outrage from fans is going to be extreme if the Giants lose again this season. And if Daniel Jones fails, they're going to have no choice but to start looking for a new quarterback. And are they going to trust, you know, Gettleman with that after he essentially got it wrong with Jones? So playoffs or bust? Maybe not. I mean, I could see them going eight and nine and, and playing well and, and, you know, the owner saying, you know, that's proof that they're, you know, taking some strides and headed in the right direction. But if they kind of fall apart again, and particularly with Jones, and he doesn't make that leap and there's, you know, six and 11 or, or five and 12 or whatever it may be, I would say at that point, they're, they're probably gone. Yeah. And Dan, I really feel judge is the, he's really like the, you know, what makes this situation kind of complicated. Cause it's yeah. like, well, if you get rid of the GM, there's a guy that right. wants to come in or if they keep it within the building and then it's like, mm -hmm. okay, well then you can just keep judge. But you were there for Shermer and McAdoo, you know, probably so, for some of those years, I was there watching those practices and I'm not there now, which is why I really wish they let fans <laughs> in, but there's just, there's just a different feel yep. around what Joe judge is doing compared to, the practices that McAdoo would run, the practices that Shermer would run, and the type of team that they have. So really, he's the you know the wild card in this scenario as to depending on what happens with the Giants' season, keeping Joe Judge may be the reason why Dave right. Gunnelman stays, Daniel Jones mm -hmm. stays, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, you're absolutely right, and I think that's a point that's often missed when these debates kind of come up. Because if you don't hire from within, if you replace Gettleman, then you run the risk of not only, you know, a GM coming in who wants his own quarterback, but potentially his own coach. And there's no guarantee that Judge is going to be around for that. Of course, they could always get rid of Gettleman and, and go with someone like Abrams. And that would make sense, obviously. And there's some sort of, you know, um, consistency that would follow there. But, you know, outside of that, if they do replace Gettleman and that, you know, then they do run the risk of having to rebuild all over again. And I don't think... Uh, that ownership wants that. So, you know, there is this really added emphasis on the fact that, you know, they need to perform this year. And as you noted, it was very different, very, very different under Shermer and McAdoo. And listen, they were both good guys. They really were. And I don't think they're bad coaches. I just don't necessarily believe that they're made to be head coaches. 
And I think beyond just that, their um, their ability to scout players and try to communicate to, you know, the front office, the kind of players that they need on the roster and that they need to fit on the roster, you know, it, it wasn't necessarily great. It wasn't their strong suit. And with Judge, it's the exact opposite. He knows precisely what it is that he wants in each individual player. And then, you know, Gettleman, Abrams, and the other guys go out and get it. And so far, you know, again, two years in, They've done a really damn good job of it. We'll finish off with this. And this is, we have preseason football again, which is my, I mean, I love preseason football because you get to, you get to see the names that you won't, don't get to see in the regular season. Who's the guy you're like, like hoping or, or like keeping an eye out to shine. Maybe not as someone who's like, you know, they're going to come in and start, but you mm-hmm. know, the last preseason, Nick Gates is like, He's right. like he started playing well, and he became like the you know the swing tackle, the back, the main backup, and now look at him. So who is somebody that is you know like just completely off the radar as far as like team you know first team or even second string that you're looking to make a jump this uh, or make looking to shine and during right. preseason. Well, I wouldn't say that he's necessarily under the radar, but the first one that comes to my mind, it's some just someone I'm rooting for personally, is Nate Solder, just because of all the horrible things that he and his family have had to go through over the past two seasons. So I'm really just kind of rooting for that guy. But beyond that, um, you know, obviously you look at a a John Ross, it'd be great if he could stay healthy and and contribute and become something. Same thing with Dante Pettis, potentially, you know, you kind of want to see those guys uh, succeed, You kind of root for him, maybe provide a little depth, uh, more depth at wide receiver. But I I would say above all else, it would be Sam Beal. Uh, You know, the Giants made a a pretty significant investment into them and granted they're very deep in the secondary and they don't necessarily need that many more uh, guys out there. But again, you you, you go back to look at the personnel moves and the investments that were made in Beal. And at some point or another, he's got to turn it on. And not only would I say that I'm rooting for him, I think the team and Judge and everybody else are rooting for him too, provided that, you know, his legal issues you know, kind of shake out and everything is okay in that regard. Um, at some point, they got to get some return out of him. So, uh, you know, he, he could be a potential, you know, guy who shines. Um, wouldn't bank on it necessarily, unfortunately, but I would root for it. We talked about CMB with Art last week, and I think I think now that you brought him up, uh, every single interview we do during camp, we're going to have to bring up at CMB <laughs> at some point. Uh, so, so I'm glad, I'm glad you said Sam Beal, just cause I think that's going to happen, uh, for the rest of camp, Dan, we appreciate you coming on. Where can people find you and your work? Obviously you can find me at giantswire.com. Uh, you can also find me at USA today sports weekly. Uh, that's the, um, USA today's, uh, weekly publication that goes through training camp all the way through, uh, the Super Bowl. And if you want more long form analysis, it's not necessarily giant specific. You can also find me at Larry Brown sports. Sounds good. Dan, we uh, appreciate you always have a good rest of the day, a good camp. And uh, hopefully we get to see you at fan fest. Absolutely. Justin, Bobby. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Love your work. Keep, keep going strong. You guys are just getting started. Appreciate you. Attention listeners across the galaxy, even though there's life only on earth, all the way from Australia to Houston. Do we have a pew problem? If so, our friends at Manscaped have cleared you for takeoff with their fourth generation and brand new lawnmower 4.0. Kick your pubes to the next plant with the performance package 4.0. The orbits in your pants will feel like you're in zero gravity when you use the best tools for the job from the leaders in male grooming. Join the two million men worldwide who trusted thank two million who trusted manscape and get your rocket ready for takeoff by going uh-huh. to manscape.com i don't like calling it a rocket to be honest because that reminds you of like a dog for 20 percent <laughs> off plus free shipping with the code giants the world is starting to open the performance package 4.0 from manscape is here to help you get ready inside you'll find their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer weed whacker ear and nose trimmer crop preserver ball deodorant crop reviver toner plus two free gifts performance boxer briefs and the shed travel black you know i live on the space coast like like if if you if people ask me where in florida you're from like the space coast where the space shuttle goes up like spacex that's like a 20 minute drive for me do you have that david bowie song uh humming in your head every time you see one go up no that's what she said nope nope um but you know like space is kind of like a big deal around here maybe if you ever come down here i'll take you to kennedy space center please do 
Lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor, a new multifunction on-off switch can engage in a travel log, and gives you the ability to turn 4,000 4, K LED spotlight on and off when I when you need uh, mm-hmm. for a more precise shade. Did I mention the trimmer is waterproof too? That's crazy. Michael Phelps is drooling just thinking about your wiener and the possibilities. Yep. Manscaped also threw, uh, you know, that's 20% off plus free shipping with the code giants at manscaped.com for a clean and uh, clean Trinity and beyond. Oh, they're calling the, uh, your things a Trinity, your space balls. will thank you. Wow. That's just great. Manscaped 20% off free shipping code, G- free shipping with the code giants at manscaped.com. A lot of metaphors for penis their ads always ad make me uncomfortable. Like their well, products but, are great, but their ads, they, they just always make me a little uncomfortable. No, reading. I mean, I like the metaphors for penis in there. They usually don't do it all that often. But there was a lot of hints to rockets. Well, if we look uh, at our well, analytics for our audience, it's ninety nine percent men. But I'm always like, you know, the one like, you know, if like my mom listened to that, I'd be I'd be embarrassed. But it's it's great products. Go get the products. Uh, appreciate you guys, Justin. Anything else you want to say before we close this baby out? We're in full pads. We're in full pads. So more clips. Um, get on the social media. If you're just a podcast person, you're just a YouTube person. Get on the social media. Follow Talking Giants. Don't follow the main Giants page. Follow Talking Giants. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're putting out clips wherever we can kind of find them. We give the creds to the beat reporters and stuff like that. But Bobby does an awesome job running the socials while I'm getting the PPPs and everything kind of behind the scenes ready to rock and roll. And I have to communicate with the people in our company, which, pfft, no, they're good people. Full pads. Let's rock and roll. Uh, let's get ready for Fan Fest. It's next week. You're going to be in New Jersey. I love it. Yep, we'll be back on Friday. I think we're having Patricia Trina. Ooh. Which, by the way, Justin, I think we have to record that on Wednesday. Sure. Um, so I think we're having Patricia Trina on. Don't don't quote me. Um, or maybe do go tweet at her to put, you know, make sure she doesn't like bail put the, out. Put, on put the last pressure second. on. Yeah. All right. We appreciate you guys. We'll be back on Friday with PPPs in the middle. Until then, let's go big blue. <laughs>